sometimes I'll hear bass players that can do wonderful things, you know, the, lots of chops. I admire what they can do, but I don't want to play that way. I like the meteor part of the bass. I don't, I don't care for the sound of it way up high. I think probably George Mraz had it together as well as anybody that I can think of. I heard him with, with Hank Jones's trio. He could play anything Hank could play, you know, uh, and in tune and, and right on the nose. I'm, I kind of agree with Bob Cranshaw that uh, the pocket is the important place. You have to do that first and then whatever else you can do besides that is nice. I've always thought of bass lines as melodies uh, or counter melodies. So I try to, I try to do that, I try to keep myself interested. In the early days of playing, before there was any amplification, uh, I used to try to find a place to stand where I could hear myself, you know, if I could get a, a hard surface underneath me or behind me or something like that. Uh, it was always better, uh, especially if it was a, a lot of horns. Now that the amps are so good, uh, I can play a little easier, but I still like to dig into the string in order to get that percussive pop at the beginning, because it seems to me that's part of the rhythm, the rhythmic movement, you know. And I do like the, low, the lower registers. You know. My very first good job with Stan Getz, uh, I was playing gut strings and we started the first tune and my D string broke. And I tried to play around it a couple of, for a couple of bars, but I realized that I, I wasn't having much luck. And I saw that there was another bass under the piano, so I figured, well, the house bass player won't mind if I I grabbed his bass instead, so I just put mine down, grabbed his. It was a left-handed bass. <laughs> I made more mistakes with that than I would if I'd get the other one. The, the tune ended and the sand gave me time to put a new D string on and everything was all right. But the gut, uh, when you first put it on, it stretches out all the time, so you're constantly tuning. Then you'll get it to where it's really nice and that lasts for less than a week. And then it starts to stretch out unevenly. It'll, it'll be thin in one place and fat in another. And so your intonation gets weird. And, uh, and then it'll start to peel. Little, little pieces will start to strip off and unwind. And you're always with the razor blade uh, trying to straighten out. And finally it'll break and then you put another one on, you know. So uh, with the steel strings, after you get used to the, it has to be a different a action and, and uh, your hands have to get used to the steel. But a set of strings will last you forever, you know. They're very expensive, but they last a long time. <laughs> I would never go back to gut. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, unamplified gut is more pure, you know. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> it's the layer, yeah. I mean, you try to get the sound that you that you hear, whatever you're playing on. I remember when I first started recording, it was hard to get the right sound because there was a microphone, it was like a birdcage microphone that they liked to give the bass players because all the announcers liked that. It, it, it accentuated the depth of their voices, you know. But if you had any experience with it, if you played hard like we all did in those days, because you're trying to get the most sound out of your bass you can, the mic would pick up the, the impact of the, the note, but it wouldn't get the after ring. So even if you're getting a nice long sound, when you hear the playback, it's like thump, 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 thump. But if you back off and don't play that hard, it would get everything except that you were not having any influence on the music, on the musicians that you're playing with because they can't hear you, you know. I, I fought that for, oh, a couple of years, I guess, trying to figure out what the hell to do. And then I got into A&R Studios with Phil Ramone one time and he took a Telefunken mic and wrapped a piece of foam around it and stuck it in my bridge. 
and right away the sound was just the way it sounded to me, you know. Not only that, I didn't have to worry about keeping my F hole on the microphone, you know, I could turn any way I wanted and, uh, and the, the pickup was still the same. Mm -hmm. 